Okay, this is a really quick and basic uh, video on wireless mesh networks and how they operate. Uh, first off, we'll show the key elements on what makes a mesh network and the things you have to look for. And so we have three things here I'm going to mention. The first one is going to be the mesh nodes. In the mesh network, you will have what's called a wrap and a map. Uh, the RAP is the acronym for Root Access Point. This would be the AP that is plugged into a network via some sort of cable or fiber connection that uh, has network connectivity leading back out to the internet or access to the data network that you want to span across the wireless nodes. The MAP is the acronym for Mesh Access Point which uses a separate frequency as a wireless backhaul to replace the wire that that frequency makes a connection between a map and the wrap to get back to the network connectivity that the wrap is connected to the next things that we have is client access frequencies and backhaul frequencies the other thing that we would have would be client devices the uh, whole idea here is um, to be able to put devices on the network and so we're going to use various ways to get devices on the network now if you look at the metropolitan use for citywide wireless you'll see a WiMAX base station uh, in several locations here uh, these base stations the dotted lines are actually wireless connectivity so you see the wireless backhaul going from base station to base station and you see these distribution and generating substations power plants wind turbines, solar panels, they're gathering information and data and backhauling it back to this fiber optic connection and goes across the internet back to another WiMAX base station that has connectivity to the call center, the network operation center, and the corporate offices so that the data miles and miles away from these power plants and power sources can be connected back the data can be collected and sent back to these areas here. The other way is concentrators. You got access points leading back to homes and things like that. Um, you also have, uh, if you look here, smart metering. So uh, a lot of the electric companies are using smart meters now so that the Wi-Fi, especially 802.11ah coming out, it's going to be a great protocol to use for electric companies to gather uh, data on how much electricity you use monthly without actually sending a truck out to your house. The wireless signals can collect your information, send it across the backhaul, hit the fiber optics on one of these connectivities, send it across the internet if needed, and of course get it back to the corporate office. Uh, you have mobile workforces, citywide fleets, buses, that's a huge thing going on. Uh, emergency units, police officers, fire trucks, ambulances, they all use the WiMAX frequencies to be able to backhaul and get their signal back to the police stations, the ambulances, and the um, hospitals and things like that. So that's uh, very good use to, to use uh, mesh technology to assist in emergencies, assist in industry, and uh, assist in uh, corporate business as well. Uh, so let's take a look at metro buses and how they operate. In some cities, this is done via satellite, but other cities is done by access points, uh, mesh nodes set up on corners of streets all across the city and made a mesh network using 802.11 technology. It's actually a pretty popular thing. So proximity beacons are uh, utilized on these buses so that the bus has a sensor on it and the access points are at every trigger every um, corner of the street and once the bus gets within a certain distance a certain db gain from the access point on that corner a pre a proximity beacon would trigger a pre-recorded message that would tell everybody on the bus through the speakers you're at fifth street or maybe you're at Central Avenue, or maybe you're at Tivoli Theater, a very popular theater downtown Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Carter and Days Inn, the intersection to where the Days Inn Hotel is in downtown Chattanooga, of course.
But uh, this is a really popular thing to use and it's really great for tourists because it helps them find their destinations. If you could just stop and think for a minute that um, maybe way up here at 5th Street, a couple of tourists are looking for their hotel. They step onto the bus and say, hey, uh, we are staying at the Days Inn. Do you, does your bus go by there? Sure it does. Hop on. So they're on 5th Street. They don't know where it's at. They know that it's at Carter, and they know that their hotel is Days Inn. But as the bus travels down the street, every intersection that it gets to, as it closes in on that intersection, that proximity beacon triggers the pre-recorded message and says, I'm at Central Avenue, I'm at Tivoli Theater. And then the next thing they hear when they're about a, you know, 100 yards or so from the Days Inn, they hear the message, Carter and Days Inn, they jump up and pull a little line to trigger stop requested. And of course, the bus pulls over at the intersection there at the bus stop at Days Inn and lets the tourist off. It's a very big help and uh, very popular in metropolitan cities now. Now let's take a look at how the mesh node works. The mesh node has a, uh, a backhaul frequency that takes it back to its central site, which would typically be your RAP, your root access point that is cabled or connected via fiber to the network of where all these things are connected and backhauled to. You have something that's very popular in cities now is video surveillance and law enforcement uses them a lot to help solve crimes, see who was responsible for an accident or find stolen cars, find kidnapped children, etc. Uh, and all the public safety ranges here you have 2.4 gig, your 5.8 gig and the public safety frequency is 4.9. Another popular thing is public access Wi-Fi. Wi um, people, citizens, visitors, the tourists walking down the streets can actually use their smartphones and things like that to access public Wi-Fi walking down the street so that they can look up information about a business, which is another thing that uh, there's other local apps to, that businesses will utilize across that so that they can also send out proximity beacons to smartphones so that when you're walking through the streets and your smartphone gets triggered with a beacon the businesses can actually send you a coupon it says hey come in here for 20 percent off of a starbucks coffee and you turn your head and you look wow there's a starbucks right there i'll use that coupon right now a really good thing that uh, businesses use to try to get you in their door and another great thing that Wi-Fi is used for in uh, citywide access is traffic signal control. If you see emergency vehicles coming down the street, lots of times people are clogging up the streets trying to pull over and get out of their way and they don't always uh, have a clear path. They have to go off on the shoulder and sometimes go up the passing lane or turning lane. The traffic signal control will actually if, uh, if you, just for example, if an ambulance is going up Main Street, all the intersecting streets coming into Main Street, this traffic signal control has the ability to turn all the incoming streets uh, and give them red lights to stop all traffic. And say the ambulance is going north to south, well, the south to north traffic can get all red lights so that they'll stop, and all the east and west intersections coming into Main Street will stop as well, and all the lights on Main Street in the path of the ambulance or the fire truck or the police uh, patrol car has all green lights so that their path back to the person they're trying to help is lit up and cleared with all, all obstructions out of the way due to traffic. It's a really cool thing and it's getting more and more popular to use. So how does it work? Well, if you look here, the tallest building in the middle of this picture has the internet gateway access point that has the connection out to the internet. Now, this may be some sort of hospital or some big corporate high-rise building. But the cool thing about this is there's one internet gateway or one root access point. All these other nodes on top of these buildings just happen to be mesh nodes that are using a backhaul capability to get back to the internet gateway AP. 
And the same thing takes place um, through all the client devices as well. And I want to want to mention something here in this picture. Here's a fixed backhaul on these. This probably fiber like we saw in one of the other pictures. But uh, something I want to mention is, say for example, we have access points here, here, and here. This would be a root, and this would be a root, and this right here would be a mesh. The access point over here on the mesh has a send and a receive antenna, and the root access point has a send and a receive antenna. So the transmit antenna here and the receive antenna here will negotiate algorithms and negotiate data rates so that they can find out what their highest speed that this root access point can transmit to the mesh access point. So you may, so to speak, get 150 megabits per second as you're transmitting from here to here, but you may not get the same data rate from there to there because the transmit antenna on the mesh node has a total difference uh, negotiation back to the receive antenna on the root access point. So just like when you check your uh, data flow and your throughput on, a, on your home internet and things like that, it's sort of similar when you're doing a speed test. It will first test the download speed and then it'll test the upload speed and almost all the time they are different. Well, in wireless it's pretty much the same way the transmit antenna negotiates with a receive antenna via the line of sight, the Fresnel zone being clear and things like that. And then the same thing for the transmit antenna here and the receive antenna here. So you may get 150 megabits per second going this way and then 300 coming back this way. So just need to make sure you remember that. That's a really cool thing to remember. Now look at all the different ways that the connections can take place. You have homes that are getting internet access via these wireless connections. You have mobile clients getting it. Office buildings getting their internet via wireless. Wireless. You also have ships out in the ocean that's not, of course they're not using this tower, but they would use um, wireless connectivity via satellites. So they would negotiate a send and receive, a download and an upload speed the same way that mesh nodes would negotiate their backhaul. Now here's what they look like. Here's an access point on, on this light pole. So if you're driving down the street and you see some of these light poles hanging over the street and you see a device that looks like this right here, that's more than likely what you have is some sort of mesh network connecting throughout the city. Here's one from Motorola, and of course Motorola is set up like some of the uh, Cisco access points, the 15, uh, 1552 that I showed you earlier, um, and the also the Cisco 1532, uh, where they'll have the backhaul antennas on top and the client access antennas on bottom, or vice versa. I mean, you can. The, some of the access points you can configure to be one or the other and you could have 5 gig here and 2.4 gig here and now a lot of access points are coming out where you can do 5 gig backhaul on one channel and of course use multiple uh, diversity of other channels for client access on the other antennas lots of diversity in mesh now it's, it's getting more and more popular and we all know what this is. Here's an antenna array, and they're all connected down to the bottom of the pole through a switch. Uh, this could be your root access point, which would be a point-to-multipoint situation. Now, let's look at how it's designed. Of course, you have a switch inside a network, an office building, or a complex, or an ISP, depending on how it's set up. And you have a mesh access point, which here... I'm showing you a picture of a, a, a Cisco 1500 series access point that can be used as a regular AP or it can be used as a mesh AP. Uh, it can have the connect you have your connectivity via fiber or or cable um, copper. 
up to the root access point. This would be your root. Now, it sends out a backhaul signal over to the mesh nodes. It could be 15, 20 different mesh nodes out there, but it sends out its backhaul signal, and the mesh nodes receive the backhaul signal, and then on the other set of antennas, it sends out a client access on a total different channel or frequency, depending on how it's set up, so that client devices can connect two blocks down the street, ten blocks down the street, what have you, depending on how the network's set up. Now, in this scenario, we're going to call this a backhaul of 5 gigahertz with an 80 megahertz uh, wide channel at 802.11 AC protocol. Uh, we're using the 80, 80 megahertz channel so that we can get a lot of throughput across our backhauls because we have multiple mesh nodes out there. Now, this slide here is going to show you how many protocols are used in wireless. So in our client access, we're going to say that we're using 2.4 gigahertz, 20 megahertz wide channels, and our protocols available on these antennas are 802.11 B, G, and N. Now here's the really cool thing because a lot of people think that if you have one protocol running on a frequency, you can't have multiple protocols running on a frequency. But check this out. This client happens to be at a distance where it has negotiated from the transmit and receive antennas the 802.11b protocols and it's getting 11 megabits per second throughput. That's its data rate, 11 megabits per second data rate on it uh, because of where it's sitting. The next client device has negotiated an 802.11g protocol and it's getting 36 megabits per second um, data rate and of course the next one is 802.11g and it has negotiated 54 megabits now they're all using different modulations different protocols what have you all on the same access point that's the really cool thing about it so you see a lot of protocols at use you're you seeing the 5 gigahertz 802.11 AC protocol with 80 megahertz wide channels you're seeing BGN protocols transmitted and B and G protocols being used. And of course with the data rates exchanged like that, there's probably several uh, modulation types being used here as well. Now if you've seen my other videos, uh, you know that in this particular scenario, the slot time for this particular network has slowed down to 20 microseconds slot time and not using the faster 9 microseconds because of this client right here. If you remember those videos, if you're using 802.11b on your 2.4 network, then the entire network has to slow down to the speed that 802.11b can negotiate at, and the, the heartbeat, the slot times that are beating out the drum in the background for everybody to sync up with on the network is 20 microsecond slot time. Once this guy gets off the network, everybody can go back up to nine microsecond. Your entire network here will slow down to the slowest guy on the network. Not their data rates, just their slot times, which that is a very significant thing. And if you've watched the other videos, you, you know what I'm talking about. So let's look at the network here. How the mesh network looks is typically like this, and this could be scattered out all over a city. It could be scattered out all over parking lots. Uh, let your imagination run wild. When you're using mesh networks, you need power to all these access points, and I've powered them multiple ways. I've used batteries, solar panels, uh, electricity, this light poles, uh, the taps on top of the light poles, you could tap into them and, and power them with PoE. There's multiple ways to power these mesh nodes, so the uh, use case is endless. But the basic things that you need to hear is you need, here you have a couple of root access points. So on one side of the city, you've got a root, and on the other side of the city, you got a root, and then everybody else has mesh connectivity. They've got backhaul from each other 
so that they can all find a way back to one of these roots. Now, look here at this little circle and slash right in here. Here's the great thing about mesh that uh, makes mesh really unique. It's And if you kind of picture it like routing protocols, it has its uh, own way of checking the path to get back. So if it can find a quicker path and a better signal strength and uh, better data rates to get back to the root, it will choose a different path automatically. And so looking at this one, you see that that path there has went down and this one has automatically negotiated an alternate path back to a root and it has even changed root access points. That's the really cool thing because what this does with mesh nodes when you have multiple root network connectivity in your network all these mesh nodes have redundancy. They don't have just one path back out to the network they have multiple paths back out to the network and that's what's really cool they do it automatically you don't have to tell it to do it it does it on its own so that's what's really cool about 